Standard Chartered and CNBC TV 18 present India on the Move Season 4. Hello and welcome to Season 4 of India on the Move on CNBC TV 18. I'm your host, Mridu Bhandari. On this very special conversation series, we catch up with eminent industry leaders to share ideas and insights on critical sectors of the Indian economy. Today, our focus is on India's backbone or its engine, its MSME sector that employs close to 100 million people. And of course, it's a sector that has been badly hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. So we're here to share ideas and insights on reviving the MSME sector. And I'm joined by a very eminent panel here today. Manish Jain, Managing Director and Co-Head, Corporate Commercial and Institutional Banking at Standard Chartered India. Ajay Thakur, Head of BSC SME and Startups, and Shankar Chakravarti, CEO of Acute Ratings and Research. Thank you, gentlemen, for taking out time and joining us here today. We are talking about reviving India's MSMEs with ideas, innovations, and investments. Indeed, the COVID-19 pandemic has hit the small businesses the hardest, and according to industry estimates, about one third of the six crore small businesses in India could be wiped out if they don't get access to affordable capital in time. Uh, so Shankar, let me perhaps begin by asking you to give us a sense of uh, the impact of losses that this sector has borne over the last couple of months. 2020 has shown us some unprecedented times. And has this impact been any different on SMEs that had a high credit rating score uh, as opposed to those who perhaps had no score or had very poor scores? Uh, to be very honest, uh, uh, there is no words to uh, describe how difficult it has been for the SMEs. Uh, it's completely unexpected, unprecedented, and uh, you know we have already seen a slight uh, slowdown and uh, you know credit issues uh, even before the pandemic struck. So, uh, so pandemic has really uh, you know uh, created a situation which was already getting worse. Uh, what? Uh, uh, what we have we have seen uh, now, uh, number one is uh, very clearly the better rated companies have uh, survived better. Uh, you know the the, the companies uh, uh, who who needed funds uh, in exigency they have been able to borrow if their ratings has been good. Uh, that that in turn has helped them uh, keep uh, keep themselves afloat. Uh, not just the best uh, rated companies, but also the companies which at least had uh, some kind of rating in the public domain has been able to, uh, you know, uh, deal with their bankers in that manner. On the other hand, uh, there are uh, the universe of SMEs is largely unrated. So, uh, so we have we are clearly seeing uh, a, a lack of trust and uh, between between the borrower and the uh, bankers and fund is really not flowing in that uh, direction so so i would say that uh, this is this is what uh, we are seeing in the uh, you know in the universe of credit ratings let me bring in manish uh, here manish how have banks like yours uh, and financial institutions at large been hand holding msmes through this entire crisis uh, secondly there was also the emergency credit line guarantee scheme that was announced by the government uh, how much of the heavy lifting of this atmanirbhar program uh, you know has been done by banks uh, as of now i think about 41% of the 3 lakh crore package has been dispersed, uh, but uh, there have been some concerns around the implementation, around the delivery of the package uh, on ground. How are banks and financial institutions trying to smoothen that process out? Uh, so clearly, this, these have been very challenging times for SMEs. You know, the last six months have been challenging, uh, but the banks have been working uh, with their clients, especially SMEs, uh, uh, throughout this period. Uh, first and foremost, banks ensured that all client transactions uh, are processed in time. In the initial lockdown period, when the clients are not uh, uh, coming to office, the uh, transactions are handled digitally. Uh, uh, most bank branches were open in the lockdown period as well. Uh, the various uh, government schemes uh, that came out, and uh, a moratorium was one, and emergency credit line is another. Uh, they were uh, proactively discussed with all uh, MSME clients and delivered to them. Uh, additional working capital facilities were provided under the RBI's easing of working capital norms. Um, 
then the passing of the uh, rate cuts uh, was ensured uh, to just uh, see to the fact that uh, there is uh, no uh, financial burden on the msmes the yes, standard chartered bank in fact we also proactively reached out to all our clients and discussed with them and helped them in uh, making the cash flows and projecting the cash flows and if any additional funding is required to tide over this covid period uh, worked with them to provide that uh, you spoke about uh, the uh, the atmanirbhar uh, bharat scheme and uh, the emergency credit line uh, so the disbursements and the sanctions really started from uh, july onwards uh, as of now uh, in the first week of uh, october about 1.9 lakh crores out of 3 lakh crore uh, scheme uh, was sanctioned and about 1.4 lakh crore was disbursed um initially the smes had uh, availed of this facility to meet their expenses and also uh, to kick start their business but gradually they slowed down because they wanted to be very sure of the demand pick up and then only uh, draw the facilities uh, the sanction uh, deadline is october end and uh, the disbursement can happen by december we are seeing some pick up in the economy and also this quarter is a season time so i'm quite hopeful that this 41% uh, pick up will significantly go up Uh, Ajay, let me also focus a little bit on the role that exchanges have played uh, during these times. Give us a sense of what the COVID nineteen impact has been like, particularly on listed MSMEs, and how have exchanges really played a proactive role in aiding uh, SMEs uh, as far as business continuity is concerned uh, during the pandemic. Uh, as far as stock exchange is concerned, we were the one who have created the equity culture in the country, and we always felt whether. you know pre covid or even in the covid era that equity is a very important player in ensuring the growth of small medium enterprises as well as large enterprises so in 2012 we have started the sme platform to uh, provide equity to the sme promoters uh, whereby they have to do a lesser compliance post listing and also the cost of listing can be brought down heavily and in this uh, covid era you know we have seen the listing of almost 15 companies who have raised almost 100 crores through the stock exchanges in this covid era you know as the demand has shrunk a lot you know to service debt will become more and more difficult and therefore it is very much important that these sme promoters should be serviced through equity and that's why we are telling to the sme promoters to access this sme platform because the cost of listing is very less on the sme platform and the post listing compliances are also very less and very cost effective so therefore we are playing a very important role we have already made 20000 uh, more than 20000 promoters uh, in last 6 7 years even during this uh, you know covid era itself we have done almost 85 uh, webinars and meeting to various uh, promoters to different associations etc and trying to make them understand the benefits of the listing right right okay and uh, ajay you were making that point earlier about uh, the importance of equity for msmes has covid 19 impacted the number of smes uh, that were getting listed pre covid and during covid what have those numbers been like uh, also what makes listing such an attractive route to alternative uh, you know securing uh, alternative route to securing capital and today uh, about 8 years on since the bsc sme platform was launched how aware are smes about this route how is the uptake uh, going on at this point in time there are various benefits of listing you know number one you are getting equity funds for the, your capex and opex uh, second you get the visibility for, through this market third one you know because uh there is a proper balance between equity and debt de- therefore the cash flow or uh, cash outflow is less and therefore the profitability moves up the credibility of the promoters increases and therefore you know all the stakeholders get confidence into the company you know even the interest rate comes down and even the employees you know employees by giving them isops you can retain the employees we have seen the uh, in the it time you know when the promoters used to retain the employees by giving them isops and it has given a very good result to those promoters so there are various benefits that are associated by, by getting listed you know equity gives them an instrument where by there is no need of servicing so therefore no cash outflow and it gives a lot of comfort level to the promoters i think i not only you know for 500 companies got listed who have raised almost 7000 crore rupees but besides that they have created almost market capitalization of 35000 to 36000 crores no it's a big number as far as market capitalization is concerned 
and if more and more sme promoters will go for this route i am quite sure that it will change the landscape of this country uh, manish most of our traditional smes have also been forced to embrace emerging technologies during the last couple of months uh, one how have they been coping with this entire uh, eco new ecosystem the digital and the connected world to how are banks and financial institutions aiding them in this digital transformation journey uh, there was a recent report which said that 30% of the msmes in this uh, covid period have started um some sort of e-commerce functionality or a business website uh, and more than 50% msmes have actually been conducting their business through video conferencing so clearly this was an inflection uh, point for all the msmes to get comfortable with digitization and then move ahead on the journey now uh, they are looking at uh, digitalization as a means to grow with less investment in fixed costs manpower marketing costs you know some of the regular routine uh work uh, are getting digitalized like hr payroll accounting uh and uh, and all the msmes are uh, realizing the benefits of it within standard chartered bank as well i have seen number of clients uh moving uh, their uh, transactions onto online banking transaction platforms um in fact most banks have uh, been adding features onto the online banking trans uh, transactions to just make it more and more efficient for the clients Uh, for standard chartered bank the online uh, online banking transaction takes care of all trade and non trade transactions including opening of letters of credit or guarantees uh, forex transactions uh, uh, in terms of forex conversions or booking forwards import and export handling uh, because now there is uh, a connectivity with rbis idps and edps uh, platform so with a much reduced paperwork similarly uh, a bank account can be integrated with the erp at the client side uh so the bank account reconciliation uh, becomes uh, very very easy and uh, we all know that uh, the payments and collections landscape has been very rapidly changing so banks have been educating their clients uh, to get on to that and uh, take the benefit on that right on that positive note let's head into a short break right now but the conversation continues right here on india on the move season 4 exclusively on cnbc tv at Welcome back you are watching season 4 of India on the move on CNBC TV 18 and today our focus is on India's MSME segment uh, a sector that employs close to 100 million people uh, perhaps one of the silver linings like we were talking before the break uh, of this pandemic has been the increased digitalization of our entire ecosystem whether it's at the consumers end whether it's at the lenders end uh, so shankar let me get a perspective from you with this whole accelerated pace of uh, digital technologies how do credit rating agencies like yours does your uh, you know does your role expand does you do you shift shape in these times going forward as more and more smes take to digitalization how do you also see the whole credit rating uh, parameter evolving technology is a important factor uh, for improving uh, profitability of the uh, companies and to scale up uh, the operations and yes uh, till covid happened Uh, most of the companies uh, did not consider technology as a priority uh, and to be fair to these companies we also must understand that the cost of technology was also very high earlier uh, if you look at uh, during the uh, pandemic period uh, uh, if you compare it with uh, say 4 years or 5 years back uh, the uh, network uh, cost was much much higher uh, it has come down uh thanks to the competitive scenario in the telecom sector uh, and it has come down significantly similarly uh, other tools uh, you know and and uh, systems which really uh, you know made uh, uh, softwares like zoom and uh, microsoft teams from uh, being uh, enterprise softwares to uh, retail software the good thing is that the companies have uh, wholeheartedly accepted and they are uh, you know uh, uh, they are they are adopting technology at a pace which has never happened and the cost of such adoption of uh, technology is also uh, uh, also very uh, low now uh, apart from these two uh, factors uh, information security and replacement of uh, uh, employment opportunities through through technology uh, it it has been a great thing and it's a positive development for uh, the ratings because 
uh, it's very clear that uh, technology brings down cost and uh, helps the companies to uh, scale up, which uh, which ultimately helps in uh, improvement in ratings. Uh, Ajay, BSC SME has had some collaborations with banks in recent times. What sort of growth opportunities will these open up for SMEs, uh, especially those that are looking to scale up, those that are looking to uh, perhaps make a mark in global markets? Uh, Mridu, in fact, uh, we are collaborating not only with banks, but also with various state governments. We have also been doing a you know, lot of events with uh, you know, MSME ministry also. The reason I have already told you that, the, uh, that you know, BSC can't reach everywhere. And at the same time, you know, the banks have got a lot of uh, their SME clients. We want to uh, you know, leverage their database to reach to those SME promoters to make them understand about the SME platform. At the same time, we have done collaboration with various state governments where those state governments are incentivizing those SME promoters which are going for listing. So I think it's a very uh, big move that we have taken because, you know, unless until, you know, all the stakeholders come together to make these SMEs, which you have rightly said are the backbone of Indian economy, to make them grow, make them strong, you know, this country can't survive. It is very much required that we should collaborate with each other, all the institutions, with the governments, etc. And reach to look and corner of the country. We have also done collaboration with the, for the startup platform also. Because now, state, Startups India is third largest destination of startups. So we have also collaborated with them to reach to the startups. So that we can bring more and more startups also on our startup platform. So these exercises uh, we have taken off and I am quite sure that this will bring a uh, better result for the country and more and more SMEs can come, uh, they can take benefit of the SME platform. Right, right. Fair enough. And uh, another critical area that where SMEs need support is that of supply chain financing. And Manish, if I may come to you, uh, is this a fast emerging opportunity area for banks like yours? Uh, you know, how is Standard Chartered well poised to help SMEs in supply chain financing, particularly as, uh, you know, leveraging data insights is going to be crucial to really enable the whole uh, connected supply chain of the future? Uh, so, uh, uh, supply chain finance is actually very, very uh, important for delivering uh, 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 financing to SMEs because here you can use the the credit st strength and the linkage with the anchor companies. And this is becoming even more important now because most of the corporates uh, world over are investing in strengthening the supply chain, uh, including uh, geographic diversification. Uh, so, this is a very, very uh, important uh, time for uh, SMEs to uh, get plugged into the global value chains of a large number of uh, global corporates. And banks have a very important role to play in that. Uh, Standard Chart Bank was actually an early uh, entrant into supply chain finance and has a fairly large book. Uh, and now we are also leveraging technology to uh, develop tools which are based on data analytics and machine learning, which will observe the transaction pattern and trend. And based on that, uh, predict the incremental requirements that SMEs may have and when. And at the same time, also give early insights into the risk so that they can be proactively managed. So using uh, such tools um, and supplementing it with the traditional uh, financial uh, analysis that all the banks do, the credit delivery uh, uh, can be improved and uh, 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 the SMEs can benefit from it. All right. Fair enough. We are completely timed out on this conversation. So I'm going to give a final 30 seconds to each of you. Ideas, innovations or investments. What is the lowest hanging fruit that, uh, you know, India's MSME ecosystem should be aiming for, uh, you know, perhaps to survive these times and then, of course, to thrive in the post-COVID-19 world? Uh, we can begin with you, Ajay. You know, I think that, you know, two things that will be that will play a very important role, not only in survival of uh, SMEs, but also in their growth. Number one, of course, equity investment. That's number one. Uh, and number two, adaptation of technology. These two things will play a very important role. I think now that it's uh, the right time for these SME promoters to imbibe these things in their business. Shankar, what would you like to add to that? The bad times are the best times to make investments in yourself. So, uh, so go ahead and ma make your strategy. Go ahead and identify the opportunities, and do not hesitate in making investment in you know executing some of the stuff that in good times you will not be able to do. Right. 
Manish, final word to you, lowest hanging fruits that you think the MSME ecosystem should be aiming for? So, uh, see, indeed, these are challenging times, but uh, as they say, never waste a crisis. Uh, it is a good time for SMEs to uh, reevaluate their cost structure, uh, reimagine their business model, their marketing strategies, their customers, their product proposition, uh, and of course, uh, understand all the policies and measures that government is uh, coming out with to take benefit of that. This is the time to strengthen uh, yourself uh, because the economy is going to improve again and you want to be strong enough to then capture the upside. On that note, it's a wrap of this edition of India on the Move Season 4. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for taking our time, joining us here today and sharing that valuable advice for reviving India's MSME sector. That's a wrap for today. We'll see you next time. Till then, thank you for joining us. Goodbye. Standard Chartered and CNBC TV 18 present India on the Move Season 4. Innovate.